Good day everyone, it is Caitlin and today we are going to learn how to balance the skirt, which means to make your dresses neither drag on the ground, for they are too long in some places, or to be too short and show your underpinnings in others. Alright, balancing a skirt. So balancing a skirt is simply the means by which we make the hem even all the way around the skirt, um, even though that even though the uh, even though the measurements of your skirt is going to differ from the front to the back due to your body shape, due to the fact you'll probably be wearing a bustle um, of some kind, even even if you're in a time frame where you wouldn't necessarily consider it a bustle time frame, you're still probably wearing something back there just to create a little bit of a shape that was the popular at the time. So balancing a skirt, uh, you use at least from 1825, because that's about where my time, my knowledge ends, um, all the way up through the 1860s. And basically what happens is you have a rectangular skirt for the most part, so it's just panels of a rectangular fabric, and you're stitching them together so you have a giant rectangle. You hem it on the bottom or face it, which is more common. But then you have the issue of, well, I need two more inches in the back to cover the hoop than I do in the front. And our natural inclination is to cut the fabric to make a match, which is what you do for petticoats. It is not what you do for skirts. What I did for skirts was to turn under the excess. So you cut, you do cut your skirts long in this time frame. So my skirts, um, I cut them about 45 inches long just for my height. Um, for the 1850s and 60s when I'm wearing a hoop, I typically need about 42 inches in the front and then 44 inches in the back. Uh, for 1830s, I need a 39 inch front and a 40 inch back, and then the in between time frames of the 1840s and 50s, I usually do around 40 in the front and about 42 in the back. And so my so our natural inclination is of course to cut the top of the skirt to match that, and that's not what the historical people did. What they did instead was to turn under the excess. So that, well, one, you're no longer doing your pleating or your gauging on a raw edge, you're doing it on a finished edge um, that is doubled over so it's, twice as so it's twice as strong, which is very helpful. But also, because you're not going to cut into that fabric, it's still the rectangle, but you can do the fold differently in different areas to accommodate the length or the shortness that you need. So if I'm doing the 1830s, I can take that 45 inch t tall fabric, which is now 44 and a half because I took a facing and I hemmed it. So that leaves me four and a half inches I need to turn over in the front, but because I need my skirt an inch longer in the back to just accommodate this, and of course a slight bustle, I do need it an inch longer. It's not that it's going to be an inch longer at the hem, it's going to be even all the way around the hem, but to accommodate my body shape I need another inch, so I'm only going to take three and a half inches in the back. And that's basically the purpose of balancing a skirt. The most important part of balancing a skirt, the most, most important reason, I should say, for balancing a skirt is that you're not cutting into the fabric. And cutting into fabric was, mm, once you cut it, you can't uncut it. So folding is a much better way to handle fabric because then that fabric can be taken apart. You have excess to work with. So let's say you give your old dresses to a second hand market. Well, if you were me in the 1830s and you had a 45 inch fabric, 45 inch long skirt, and you folded it to be the 39 in the front and the 30, 40 in the back, even though a person who's let's say three inches taller than I am picks up the dress, she can unpick the skirt, put that fold up to where it's only two inches taken up in the front and then one inch in the back, and that dress is going to be perfectly long for her. So, but if I had cut the fabric, we wouldn't be able to do that. She wouldn't be able to use that dress fabric that way. And so it, it extends the life of the fabric and it gives you larger panels and it gives you larger panels to work with should you need to remake a dress. And that was really the, one of the main reasons. So, so that, and of course the folding over gives us the um, doubled, stronger edge. It's a logical thing to do. Once you understand the the reasoning behind it, it makes sense why they did it that way. It seems weird to us because we are so accustomed to just cutting the panels and not worrying about it, but but really the folding of the top and then 
allows it to be reused. It allows for that stronger edge where you know the waste and all that cleaning or gauging is going to be. It allows for that stronger edge as well. So, with all that being said, how do we balance a skirt? Well, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to need some measurements. You are going to need to get into all of your underpinnings for the time frame that you're going to be measuring your skirt in. So if I'm doing the 1830s, I am in a shift, I am in a pair of stays, I am in, um, well, I wear a petticoat bustle, corded petticoat, and usually one to two petticoats over top of that. And then I'm going to measure my skirt lengths. This is much easier if you have a friend. <laughs> so I'm going to take where my, um, where my waist should be in the 30s, which is really right around your natural waist, and I'm going to measure from where the skirt needs to start to where my skirt needs to end, which in the 30s is around ankle length. I'm also going to take the same measurements at the sides and also at the center back, and I'm going to write those measurements down. Now if I'm doing 1860s, let's say 1861, so we're not goring the skirts yet, we're still doing rectangular panels. I'm going to put on my chemise, my drawers, my corset, a petticoat, my hoop, and at least one to two petticoats over top of that hoop, and I'm going to take the same measurements, front, sides, and back. Now, what happens if you're by yourself and you have no one to help you measure? Luckily, I am that person, and so I have figured out a way to do this, um, which I'm not going to model for you, but I'm going to explain it to you. So what I do is I take some very heavy books, my Harry Potter um, illustrated versions that are hardcover work really well for this and I'm going to put those in front of me I'm going to take a tape measure and I'm going to put numbers 1 through 10 underneath the books and 10 is going to be literally at the floor so the edge of my book is going to come out right here this is my 10 and then I'm going to put all my underpinnings on and then while that is taut underneath the books the books are holding this tape measure very taut I'm going to measure to my waist. I'm going to look at that measurement. This is just for 10. So I got 47 this time. Well, I'm going to have to subtract the 10 because I have 10 inches underneath the book. So that's 37. So that would need a 37 inch skirt in that example. So I'd write 37 for my front measurement. Back would do the same thing. So it's still underneath the book. Measure right to where your waist needs. If you're doing a time frame where you have a higher waist, you know, just do it where you, your waist needs to um, end. Sometimes it's easier to have a bodice already cut out and that way you can see where your waist ends. You take that, that's 48, so subtract the 10, 38. So that'd be a 38 inch skirt in that example and I'd write that as my back measurement. Then I'd do the same at the sides. In theory, both sides should be the same, but sometimes you probably want to do them both just in case there are some natural discrepancies there and you don't end up with like a wonky skirt side. Now don't forget that that measurement is to the floor. <laughs> uh, if you're doing 1830s, you do need to measure then from the floor to your ankle or wherever you want your skirt to end and then subtract that measurement. Don't forget that. If uh, you're doing 1850s and 60s, maybe an inch or two less. Um, something that's comfortable to walk in so it's not like floor length, but not something that's too high before. So like an inch or two above um, your measurement. So that's kind of where you had to know your time period and um, that sort of thing. Just remember that's to the floor and so you do need to subtract whatever excess there is. So 1830s, 1820s, subtract to your ankle, a little bit above, a little bit below. So somewhere in that general range, later time frames, look at some images of where the skirts are falling in your year and then measure to that point on you and then subtract that measurement from whatever you got. So. 37, let's just say my ankle from the floor is about four inches. That means I need a 33 inch skirt, okay? In the front, and the 34 in the back. Now with that being said, when you get your skirt measurements, my longest measurement was 38. You don't wanna cut your fabric at 38 inches because you'll have nothing to fold in that back. Cut it at least 40 inches in that situation, at least. And it's not gonna hurt you to do 45. I tend to do it in multiples of five. So if I had a, um, if I needed, if my longest measurement was say 48 inches, then I'd probably go to 50, or if I really wanted to be a little, you know, giving me a little bit more room, I'd probably cut them at 55. 
Um, if they were 49, I would go to that 455 because that one inch really isn't a lot, but you can do it. If you're short on fabric, you can do um, the fold over about an inch. That's about as little as you want to go. And you don't want like 20 inches hanging down. That's a lot of wasted fabric. I have just learned that for me, 45 inches works in the 1860s and it works in the 1830s. And so I just cut, cut all my skirt panels 45 inches, but people are gonna be doing different things. Hopefully that was helpful in explaining. But without further ado, I already have my measurements, so I'm not gonna show you how I take my measurements, but I am going to go show you how I balance a skirt. We're gonna do two skirts today. We're gonna to do a plain round waist, which just means the waist is straight all the way across. And then we're gonna do one with a pointed V uh, skirt because that requires different measurements because the V. Let's get started with our first skirt. So this is a, um, this is going to be a 1830s dress. So a, a round waist, so there's nothing pointed or anything in the front or the back. It's just a plain round set waist. Um, this one happens to be indigo dyed linen that I dyed myself. First time trying that, that was interesting. But what I've done here is I've stitched the uh, skirt seams together. And this is gonna be a back closing dress. So I marked the front, but then of course the back has an opening. Uh, so that's what we're going to start with. The very first step, again, measure from the waist where your skirt's going to start all the way to where your skirt needs to end over all of your underpinnings. That includes chemise, drawers if you're wearing them, corset, petticoats, bustle, everything. And you want, again, front measurements, side measurements, and back measurements. Let's start with the front. So. Ideally, what you would do first, you would stitch your side seams. You would also hopefully go ahead and hem your skirt or face it if you're facing it. I unfortunately have uh, run out of facing material, so this skirt is not yet faced. All that means is I'm going to need half an inch of this hem to turn under for the facing. So I'm going to add half an inch to all my measurements. That's all that means. Don't add the half an inch if you've already faced and finished your skirt hem. So I'm going to measure, uh, for me, my hems need to be 39 inches from the um, bottom of the skirt to the top, for the 1830s anyway. Okay, and I really need it 39 and a half because I did not hem this yet. Okay, so that is approximately three and a half inches from the edge. From the center. I'm going to turn this under. So notice this is the inside. There's my seam here. This is the right side of the fabric. I'm going to turn this in that three and a half inches that I measured. I find it easier to do your measurement on a seam because then you can make sure that you're getting a straight measurement and that it's not like getting wonky and adding length that way. Okay, that's three and a half right there. Let's go ahead and measure at this seam. Make sure it's also three and a half. All right. And we're going to iron that down. Now what this does is pr to provide a stable edge to actually do either our gauging or a pleating or whatever we're else we're going to do for our waist treatment, um, not a raw edge that may ravel. Now we're going to go to our center back. Now my center back needs to be 40 inches long, which for me is going to be 40 and a half because again I've not hemmed this bottom uh, skirt. That's roughly two and three quarters, really more like two and a half. We'll do two and three quarters though. I'm going to fold this over. That's about right. Iron that down. And you have a good side measurement, you're going to do that now. So just fold the back and the front together, find the exact side, do the same thing. Okay, now that we have that done, what we're gonna do is take in our hands, the side measurement and the back measurement, and we're just gonna pull it, just pull it taut. And you'll see it'll graduate it for you. So it starts at the three and a half-ish and goes all the way to the two and a quarter. So it's longer here than it is over here. And we're just gonna iron that down. All the way across. I like to pin as I go, although really the ironing does hold that um, mark pretty well, so you don't have to do the pinning. Okay. 
the last little bit. Okay. So what you're going to do now is do for the side to the front and then repeat on the other side of the skirt. So I'm going to do my uh, back again. It's two and three quarters. And when you're ready to graduate it, take the back and the side, pull, you lay it nicely that way. So nice and graduated, you don't have a sharp um, bump where the measurements change. So it be nice and a, a gentle slope. All right, and that's how you balance a round skirt. All right, we have here an early 1850s dress that we're going to balance the skirt. So this one's gonna be different than the other skirts that we're doing. This one has a slight V to the waistline of the bodice, and we're gonna follow that with the skirt. So we're gonna require more measurements than um, the, just a plain round waist. So I have my fabric here. It is raw on top. I have already have it hemmed. Um, this one happens to have a facing on it. So all that is finished. I cut my skirt panels 45 inches, knowing that my sk finished skirt length needs to be about 42 at the longest. So I cut a few extra inches in there, just like we did last time. So this one is going to start off basically the same way. I need a back measurement. Because the back doesn't go to a V, I don't need to worry about doing any extra measurements. I can go right ahead, find my center back, which is somewhere, and I measure up from the hem to 42, because I need 42 inches from the hem. I'm going to fold that over. I already had this one partially ironed. And pin it. Now remember when we took measurements that we took a center back side measurements and center front measurement, the point to my bodice doesn't start until basically exactly that, um, that center under the arm seam. So from back to sides are going to be my normal skirt measurements which for me is 42 in the back and 41 in the front. Sorry, for sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and iron that. So this is the side. I'm just gonna pin that in place. Now there's only half an inch difference between my side and back. So I'm gonna take the side in my hand and take the back in my hand, pull it taut and lay it down. So it does the graduating for me. Just iron that down. And this is a good amount of fabric for a turn on, under about three to four inches. Yeah, three and a half, well, three and a quarter inches. That's a very good turn under. It's not too small to where you would, wouldn't catch the turn under with your stitching, but it's not too long where you're wasting a ton of fabric. Now comes the slightly more difficult part. So I have here my center front. So I know normally that my center front seams or my center front skirt should be normally 41 inches. There's not a big difference between my back and my front for me. Um, yours may vary. However, my bodice comes to a point. So what I did is I put the bodice on and I measured from my waist down to the end of the point. Now that happened to measure one and th three quarters inches. My turn under needs to be one and three quarters inches more than usual. So I'm going to actually probably the easiest way to do this. To avoid doing real math, which I can do, is I'm just going to measure up the center front of the skirt to 41. Here's 41. Okay. Now that's what I would normally turn my skirt under if I was doing a, a round waist. No, but I'm not. So I need to go one and three quarters below that mark, and I really need to be on the right side of the fabric because it makes it easier to turn under. So I'm gonna measure the very tip of that because this has come to a point. And make that. I've got two pins there to mark that this is the center front. And mine is kind of a gradual slope. It's not kind of going around and then goes down immediately. It, it's a gradual slope. So I can kind of do the same thing I was doing, which is to pull on the center 
side in the center front and graduate it. I can do the same thing with the other side. Except for this has my center uh, or my side closure. So I decided to do a dog leg or a uh, offset closure. So it's not a closure that is um, center front, it's on the side. I'm going to turn that in as you normally would. And what you want to do when you have a offset closure is you want to leave about an inch and a half to two inches to do a fold over. That way you don't see the petticoats through a slit. This will give you plenty of um, just a little bit of modesty there. I'm just going to pin that twice. Keep my center front and my side, wherever that is. And actually, because this is a bit strange, we're going to have to fold this a little bit more. Take my center front and my side and pull on it to kind of graduate it. Not wanting to cooperate, you just kind of pull on it a little bit. So now that the skirt is balanced, I'm ready to gauge or pleat the skirt. Uh, in this particular example, the original I'm kind of mimicking is gauged, and it is a cotton, so gauging makes sense. So we're going to gauge the skirt. But that is essentially how you balance the skirt. Thank you so much for joining me today as we learned how to balance the skirt. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. And as always, have a fantastic week, and I will see you back here on Monday.